Patriots, Dunkin' Donuts, Foliage, and most of all, maple syrup. Maple syrup is a common topping for pancakes and waffles. The sweet, thick liquid goes great with a fluffy pancake texture. Not to mention maple bacon, maple beans, maple donuts, and maple candy, and so much more. But it wasn't always like this. Before, people only knew of maple syrup and maple sugar. Sap runs during the time period between winter and spring. You want to primarily collect sap when it's about 40 degrees during the day and below freezing at night. This is because the sap runs a lot faster, a lot better during that time period. You won't want to collect sap too early, like say early March, because the sap is all watered down and there's not a lot of it running. On the other hand, you don't really want to collect it too late, like late April, early May, because the sap starts to turn yellow, which makes it really bitter and a lot harder to boil. The time where you could collect sap, where it's the best, is about three to six weeks. And that really hasn't changed about the maple syrup industry, but different technologies have. What are those? Let's start from the beginning. Although the exact story of how maple syrup was discovered is unknown, we do know the Native Americans found it and then passed it on to the Europeans in the 17th century. One story suggests that a chief of the tribe hit his tomahawk into a sugar maple and then sap dripped out. That is when his daughter cooked the venison and sap and it became a sweet, thick liquid. Another version suggests that a group of Native Americans stumbled upon a branch leaking sap and their wives cooked it. They didn't really mean to do this, but they forgot about it and then came back and the syrup was very thick, very sweet. And then the Native Americans passed it on to the Europeans. The maple syrup industry was born right after the Civil War. Dairy farmers like to use maple syrup as a cheap sweetener for their milk, as well as another source of income during their farm's off season. Settlers in the northeastern Canada used wooden buckets and campfires to boil sap. Over time, horse sleds, metal buckets, metal taps, oil stoves, and plastic tubes came into play. Horse sleds made it easier to transport the sap to the sugar house. Metal spouts held the metal buckets firmer to the tree. Oil stoves made boiling sap faster and less dangerous. Finally, plastic tubes replaced metal buckets in the mid-19th century and made gathering a thousand times easier. With these tubes, all the sap flowed to one area where the sap is collected. In addition, a vacuum system was put into place. This system uses air pressure to pull the sap out of the tree and so no sap was ever wasted. Four, take one. It's Dabbing on them haters, take two. Opening door, take three. Take four. Scene five, take five. Scene six, take six. I'm good now. Oh, what? <laughs> mm, <I'm not> on. <laughs> See? No! Stop! <laughs> yeah. That you. smells so bad. It just started pouring. Oh boy. It was a chipmunk. Sap runs during the during during. It's raining again. Scene six. Oh my god! <laughs> snow on the snow on the snow. My butt sweat. I'm the wicked tree. You bet. Ooh. A group of a Native American tribe stumbled upon a ma 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 